I'm Heather. I'm Nate. And, and this, this is Lacey. Lacey. What? We're, We're going, going to see Tamron, Tamron Hall at the LA Times Festival of Books. Lacey was excited. We are thrilled to welcome the Emmy Award winning television host and executive producer of one of today's most loved talk shows. You gotta make a lot of noise for LZ Granderson and the one and only Tamron Hall! Hello! I love, hi! I love you too! Thank you so much! I was not prepared! You should have been oh prepared! Oh my god! You know, for many years, there have been stories that I covered on Deadline Crime, or when I was a general assignment reporter starting out in Bryan College Station, which is a small town. I've been a reporter now for 30 years. And so <laughs> I've never she had anybody applaud 30, 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> thinking a lot about the stories that I've covered and thinking about this unique experience of being a true crime reporter. We are here on the college campus. I went to Temple University and, oh, Okay, hey Al, what's up, Billy? <laughs> and so I studied how to write a story, but nothing prepared me. One of my first assignments, walking, and there was a body just a few feet away. You know, police officers and firefighters, they're trained to be first responders, but I'm a 19 year old kid thinking I'm about to report on the local news, and I'm inches away from someone who had taken their last breath on this planet. And so these things and these stories over the years were in my heart, but they were also holding my heart hostage. Um, you don't, you're not supposed to forget someone's name that you reported on, and they live in me. So I thought, okay, I need this character. I need it to be fiction because I can't relive some of those memories. I've kept a journal since I was in the third grade. So I have the details, but I needed to create a a, a world of fiction as an escape and Jordan and her life outside of what? of her being a true crime reporter needed to come from the facts of what I experienced. Yeah. Robert, Robert, we're joining Tamron Hall live from 12th and 19th and, uh, and I'm standing there and I can tell you from my heart there were many times I would look in the camera and I would want to say, y'all, he's lying, he did it. I, you know, and I'm like, I have to pretend that this person is not completely guilty. Um, I'll tell you an example, I think LZ knows the story. I was in Dallas, Fort Worth, and there was a fire, and this older couple sadly died in the fire. And I'm the first reporter on the scene with my friend Chris Mathis, who, when you read the books, the character Joey is inspired by Chris Mathis, who was my camera guy and a dear friend of mine. And back when I was reporting, they had scanners. Like, so the only other person I knew had a scanner was my nanny, my grandma. Uh, we call her nanny. And she used to have a scanner on the top of her refrigerator. And she'd be like, did you hear that neighbor? What did they do? So we had a scanner and we could hear what the police were talking about. This is how long ago this was. We get to the scene, the house is on, and sadly, the two, the couple lost their life. And I interview the son, and he's on the scene because the cop said, that's their son, you know. As clear as I am looking at you right now, the word murderer, I could see. And I it was like, this man set this fire. And I'm pretending to interview him. And I'm saying to him, and I, I promise you, I am... I, I, I tell this story and sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind when I'm telling it, but it was like yesterday. And so I have the mic in my hand and I'm saying to him, so tell me about your parents. What, da da da. And the whole time it's like, murder, murder, murder. And I see it. And I believe what he I, said, Jim. What he said, like, basically he said, you're crazy. He was, he was charged that night. He had done it for insurance and he was just a sloppy criminal. And they got him before, you know, the end of the night. And I was what, like, what is it? But what I learned was in these situations of crime stories in particular, and I've interviewed a couple of people who've carried out some heinous things. The odor of evil is real. And in writing this book and this series, I wanted to pour some of that into the pages. I interviewed a woman once, I did a story, she'd taken the life of a child and we're in prison. Well, I'm not, she was. 
I could leave. <laughs> she could not. And I'm interviewing her. I knew she was not telling the truth and she was trying to get out on an appeal. I got up to leave and she touched me. The neutral reporter is supposed to say nothing. And I turned and I said, don't touch me. And I caught myself, my camera crew looked at me, the producers, and I was like, damn it, I'm gonna get fired. And then I was like, this straight road of reporting is not for you. And that's when I started to pour my heart into Deadline Crime, and then I got fired, so I had a talk show. <laughs> so I was able to create another format, but I don't think I could ever go back to that world and not being the participant in telling much more or how I feel. So Jordan, in this book, she is a little bit of that. She's the vigilante, I wish I was. She is, um, even in the newsroom, I'm a, I think I'm a pretty, um, confident person now, but in my 20s and my 30s, I was in a newsroom shrinking myself down. I didn't want to be called bossy or loud or, you know, hostile and all of these things. So when I saw wrong, speak up because I didn't want to be fired. I didn't feel empowered. And in Jordan, she's in her 30s and she's speaking up in a way that I learned much later in life that even if I speak up, if I lose, I win. So if you're gonna take something away from me because I spoke up, then it was never mine. But Jordan is able to do that now, early in her career. I'm curious, as, as oh, thank you. absolutely beautiful, and it, I'm curious because you started off with this fictional character based upon stories that you uncovered. Yeah. And the name is based off of Michael Jordan and Michael Peyton Jordan Manning. and Peyton Manning. I fell asleep watching ESPN. <laughs> and I have, I must say, I mean, I have a lot of high heels. I actually have more Jordans than people would ever imagine. And now that I have nieces who have my shoe size, like any woman who knows once there's another kid and out there, all my shoes are suddenly being stolen. That's going to be in the book. But um, I, um, Jordan, Michael Jordan, and I cut. I said, okay, the opposite, opposite sport is football. And I just thought the name sound great. And I wanted a name that you couldn't guess the gender. And I, I just, and I, Jordan Manning felt right for me. It's a, it's a perfect name. The support of Jordan. And it wasn't until I finished the book that I realized that Shelly was me. Um, I've been very open about the murder of my sister and that my sister died in an unsolved, still unsolved crime. It's unsolved in the sense of the person was never charged, but we were always very clear and knew who the person was and, and just not the details. And even on the night that my sister uh, was found in her home, the investigator said, oh, we know who did it, we're, we're certain. And people have asked me, why isn't he in jail? And, and these questions are very valid. In writing this book, and the reason why Jordan has a forensic background is because like so many other people, the night that my sister uh, was found, we said, well, what about and DNA? The officer said, well, if the person lives with you, their DNA is all over you. And I was like, wow, because on law and order, it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> I'm like, CSI, they get you like that with DNA. And it's much more complicated. So the forensic background of Jordan was again me purging something that I thought was a clear cut answer. And it was, I've worked so hard, I put my head down, and how am I gonna get back up? And, sorry. And I said, all right. And it's funny, this tree is in front of me. I was like, you've done the Today Show, you've done MSNBC, you even hosted something called Sister Wives, which I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> they kicked my ass off that show. <laughs> they were like, you're asking too many questions, Tamara. I was like, okay, well, I thought this was a happy ending. Um, but then I had done work with Dr. Oz. I, I've done, I had done like Macy's Parade. I said, all right, every tree has branches. People know me from different things. Some people love me on the Today Show. Some people love me on MSNBC. Some people just like the way I dress. Some people like that I'm from Texas. Like, and I said, I'm going to pull together all of these things that people feel connect me to them. I'm gonna build this thing called a TAM fam, and I'm gonna build this show around people and storytelling. And I walked in to ABC Disney by myself, uh, and I said, here's the plan. They said, we're gonna give you a co-host. And I said, that's not the plan. <laughs> because I wasn't gonna sit next to somebody else and have them think 
and so often in your career that they somehow are better than you. And I'm like, it was my idea. And I said, I'll walk away from the deal. They called me back to LA and they said, we're gonna do the show with you. And I was like, um, the show are all real parts of myself. And I think why people get it is because we all know that moment of crying, wondering what's gonna happen next. We know that feeling of not being picked. I tell people all the time, I'll relate it to love. Few of us are our spouse's first choice. I know you don't wanna hear that, <laughs> but they probably like somebody in second grade. You're not likely their first, my dad was married three times before marrying my mom, I know. On paper, I was like, dad, who would marry you? But the day he closed his eyes and left this version of this world, I never saw a more beautiful love. Because on paper, he was 25 years older than my mom, our landlord, and three times married. But it took that many tries to get it right. And on the last rotation, he saw love. Oh, I just love her. I watched her on the Today Show every day. She was even nice enough to sign her book for us. Thanks, Thanks for, for going, going to see Tamron Hall at the LA Times Festival of Books with us. With us.